So I just got home from these Seosan shows that we had. It was awesome. They were all sold out. It was more than I could have hoped for. It was it was really cool. It was, I, I had a great time. But I was getting a lot of questions about what gear I was using, what was I doing, how was I controlling the patch changes, etc. So I tried to film a little rig rundown thing when we were out there. But the by the time I finally had a, a chance to do it, the opening bands were sound checking and the audio just wasn't that good. So I, I'm just going to talk over the footage and kind of show you guys what I was using for these shows. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll try to answer everything I can. I'll try to be as thorough as I can, but I may miss something. So, all right, here we go. So, starting at the top of the rack, I've got the Furman power conditioner. And that just kind of like powers, you know, it's basically just a, a, a power strip. So everything plugs into that. Going down, I've got my wireless unit. This is a Sennheiser EWD, I think is what it is. Uh, I really like it. The only downside to it is when you have multiple guitars and multiple packs, you have to turn off the transmitters in order to use the next guitar. So on, on some of the higher end units, you can just mute the RF and keep the pack on for the whole set. And it's a little bit quicker of a handoff, but for me, it doesn't really seem to matter that much. I enjoyed it. I had zero cutouts and nothing but positive things to say about it. I think it sounds great. Moving on, we have the Axe FX3. I've had this for a couple years now, and it's been rock solid. Everything sounds great in it. I use it for the delays, the verbs, the filter effects, the whammy effects. Literally everything about the guitar sound comes from this. I am using, I believe I'm using the 5153 amp block for some of the more distorted tones, a JCM 800 amp block for some, some of the mid tones, and then a, let's see, I think I might be using a Bassman for some of the clean tones, and then I am using a custom IR that I made. Now, out of the Axe effects, it goes one side goes DI to front of house, which includes the cabinet impulse response on it. And then I have another block that goes out to the power amp that has no cab IR on it. So it's just out of the amp head block into the matrix power amp. And then from the matrix power amp, it goes into one of these four by 12 cabinets that I'm using from Bad Cat. They are loaded with V30s, so they're very similar to the characteristic of what's coming out of the DI because when I made the impulse responses, I made them with a cabinet with a V30. The power amp, I believe, is about 1,000 watts. I could be wrong on that, but I've never run out of room. Uh, I've never run out of wattage. I've never left wanting more. If anything, they're sometimes too loud on stage. The guitars I'm using are my signature Balaguer Dark Horse and Lightbringer, as well as one of the earlier prototypes for one of the extra tunings that I have. And the only reason why I haven't swapped out the prototype for a new one is because they are backordered right now. As soon as they come in, I plan on getting a third one to handle all three of my, uh, or four guitar tunings for the set. Up top, I've got a stream deck, which I'm using to control Ableton. And Ableton is sending out all of our intro music and like the in-between kind of like sonic interlude soundscapes that we have going on. If you were at the shows, maybe you heard them, maybe you didn't. But those send out that as well as the click track that goes into our ears. And then all of the patch changes are controlled from Ableton as well. So I have MIDI notes in each song that change the scenes and the presets for every song. Everything is synced. All the delays and verbs are synced to the tempo of the song. And 
one of the reasons why I switched over to Ableton is just being able to quickly change the tempos of the songs on the fly or, or move songs around. And, and so far it's been, it's been great. I didn't have a single crash on these run of shows and I am using one of the brand new 14 inch MacBook pros to run Ableton to send the MIDI out of the laptop. It goes into a MIDI, a USB MIDI device, which I'm using the MIDI man, MIDI sport, uh, one by one or MIDI sport uno, I think is what it's called out of that. It goes into this MIDI solutions one by four splitter. And then you'll see that there's two cables coming out of there. One of them goes to my axe effects and one goes to Phil's rig. All right. So I think that pretty much sums it up. It's pretty, pretty basic, nothing too crazy on there. If you want to know how I did all of the MIDI switching or how to do that for your rig or how to build a rig like that, I showed how I built mine on my Twitch stream. So you can follow me over there. Or if you would like to see me do a dedicated video on it, let me know and I will do one. It's pretty easy. All right. I'll talk to you later. See you in the next one. Adios.